Now what's going on trading card game players? I have here Ryan Wells, the Sprite ruler, you know what I'm saying? But yes, he's one of the best Sprite players that I know. He's also one of TCG's finest. He was able to uh, accomplish some things over the past weekend. What would you uh, what'd you do there? Uh, so I got 11th place at the Rochester Regional. Um, I went undefeated in Swiss to about round five or six. Unfortunately, I lost in stream, just RNG wasn't there. Um, <clears throat> I ended up finishing X2, but I played against all meta, got drilled all day, didn't really matter. But I played my favorite deck, which is Sprite. I played a uh, weird variant, um, what a lot of people do not want to play because Droll is so prevalent in the format. But it worked out for me. Uh, <clears throat> let's get right into it. All right. Uh, main deck is 42. Uh, three blue, three jet, standard. Uh, two red, this came up. I was playing just one, uh, but two red came up. Opening red when you're playing into a board. Uh, is super super beneficial especially if you don't see your non-engine cards uh, as far as what I'm playing um, I'll get into that in one second and then one carrot I never really wanted more than one um, and then two starter uh, one smashers I didn't play double cross I didn't main gamma burst um, and then I played the brave engine so three water enchantress uh, three right and then the bricks. Um, I actually, <clears throat> I didn't open Draco back as much as I normally do, <laughs> but I opened these two cards a lot. And even when I didn't have access to these, uh, just having access to these with your sprites actually comes in super, super um, beneficial, especially once you see like the overall accomplishment of what you're trying to go for if you go, if you go first. And then you play the Nimbles, obviously, because you're too good with uh, Sprint. So three and two. And then I played three Ringo Worm. So this, outside of one of the tech cards I'm playing, was probably the best card uh, for the whole deck. This with Brave allows you to, if you go uninterrupted, God forbid if they don't draw you or ask you or anything, this allows you to end your board with uh, not only Brave, but you can end it with Dispatter or Baron. And if you're getting close to time, <clears throat> this also, because you go into uh, Cuba Pitch for the combo, allows you to burn your opponent for 800. So it allows you to cheese your way through time if someone's slow, uh, slow playing you. And then once, uh, pretty much if you don't know what he does, he special summons himself if you control a non-effect monster. And then if he's in your graveyard and you synchro summon that turn, he can banish himself and then special summon a level two tuner that, uh, I'm sorry, a level two token that can be treated as a tuner. So it makes your entire sprite line live and then after you synchro, you can use it to go into sprint. <clears throat> it's just super beneficial. This was the main reason why I wanted to do this with Sprite, even though the Droll is so prevalent in the format. Um, I did play the Melfi Engine, uh, just because having access to a tuner and then not having the normal summon this card, and just being able to use two level twos to uh, make forest and then search it, and then ending on full board, and then just summoning it at your end phase, is just too free in my opinion. And then the best card <laughs> from the from the entire day. Card does everything. Nobody respected Ibli at all. Nobody was prepared for it. Nobody had a slot in their extra deck that played around it. <clears throat> and then just making your list to go full combo and then ending with this to make Sprint uh, with your Gigantic and uh, just putting this on their board and then just keeping them from having a normal summon. It's literally the easiest way that I that I won all day. Uh, Book of Moons and using this to uh, negate anything as far as my opponent's Book of Moons. It was Matthew that tried to Book of Moon this just so they can play. This negate and then your Sprite line. Too much work. And then uh, Foolish Burial, just obviously Angler and then Water Enchantress. Uh, and then I played nine non-engine, which was three droll. Of course. Uh, it was the only hand trap I played. In my opinion, it was the only beneficial main deck hand trap. Since this already does, this engine already does so well playing into a board. Um, I only thought this was really prevalent and the deck is so cloggy with Brave and what I'm trying to do anyways. I had to make a choice and this was the best choice. 
And then three Book of Moon. Obviously, with this, you're trying to limit them from playing. Right. So Book of Moon and their normal summon is just pretty much GG at that point. And then three Imperm. Uh, pretty much just for cash. Uh, playing into a cash board just for the Arise Heart, like you just have to be able to have a main deck option. So I chose three and three. I was gonna do three and three Book Eclipse, but I didn't want to have an Ash target. So and going first, having this in your hand is still really good. Right. But it's 42 main deck. Um, Pretty good. Wasn't cloggy at all in my opinion. I did win six out of eight die rolls, so it was really really hard for my opponents to play. Nine times out of ten. Yeah, especially with that Ibley in the main board. Yeah. <clears throat> nobody nobody was respecting Ibley. Always respect Ibley. <laughs> we will do the extra deck. Alright. For the extra deck, pretty standard. Uh, two Gigantic. Um, one Gin Buster. Uh, one Forest. One Mannequin Cat. One mosquito. Uh, this only came up once, which was round one. I'm just using it to get over uh, to attack into a really big towers, and then just OTK him. But I didn't use it the rest of the day except to make Zeus, and then Zeus package, and then I only played one sprint. I didn't at all feel that a second one was necessary uh, because I had to limit the amount of links that I played. Mm -hmm. I played Cerberus, which came up a lot. Um, this against Cash when they just do a Rise Heart pass and they used all the Arise Heart attachments uh, just to pretty much stop you from playing. If you have all gas, which I've ran into multiple times, just being able to end or use this and then if you have a red or carrot, still being able to play by going to Gigantic after you bounce the Arise Heart and then go for game is just too good. Um, and then the Synchros, one cube of pitch, this card, pretty good. Very good. Uh, this was the only synchro I played to go in for the Melfi engine. And then Excel, Dispatter, and Baron. So this is actually the main reason why the whole Brave synchro engine works with, uh, with Apple Dragon if they drill you. So if they drill you and you have Apple Dragon and Brave, <clears throat> and you have just a level two, you can make Cupid Pitch, and then Cupid Pitch into, uh, this with the token and then this bring back the tuner and then make uh this and then you use apple dragon to banish itself this bring itself back and then if you have an extender you can go from there so you get access to your whole sprite line with having a disc batter while being under nice. and then that's pretty much the best thing about opening or having brave was it just allows you to play more if they drill you if they don't drill you then you get a free omni if they do drill you it gives you a guaranteed body from uh from the engine and allows you just to play into boards and set up um there wasn't really anything that i wanted any extra outside of what i was playing i think everything did its job pretty well um and then for the side deck three nib uh this car was good and bad it was only really good against Manadium. Uh, it's good against Cash Tira, but if they go to Rise Heart Pass, you're pretty much... Yeah, a lot of decks can play around it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, it was honestly this or or Ash, because I'm not main decking Ash for Brandon, but I didn't play a single Brandon all day. Uh, I sided this against Cash and um, uh, Manadium. That was really it. This was the one card I sided in every single round. It was so prevalent. Uh, sided against Cash, sided against, um, uh, I played against Manadium, sided against that. <clears throat> I played against, uh, I don't know the plant. I think it was, uh, Unchained, was it? Or Unchained, uh... Oh, yeah, uh, Unchained, I played against, this was good. Uh, I played against Sun Avalon, which mm -hmm. was really good. <clears throat> Yeah, almost like all the decks right now in the format are graveyard, spell, and monsters, trap, whatever. So, like, just having access to DD Crow for almost every matchup yeah, is just so was, clean. Like I said, there was not one round. Uh, the only non-meta decks that I, pl I played against was Sun Avalon and then Gold Pride. But I played against Pearly. I played against um, Cash. I played against uh, Dark World. I guess that's <clears throat> also not meta, but there was not one matchup that this didn't come in. Nice. Um, I only played two Cosmic, even though like my deck does lose really hard to Anti-Spell. 
Um, I just wanted to have other options as far as playing into a board and mass removal. And I couldn't find the space. I, could, I was thinking about cutting this down, but I wanted to have three of this against cash. But this worked out. Whenever I needed, I had it. Uh, the searchable OTK. Uh, I wouldn't main deck it just because it's so brookie if you go first. And then two thrust, and then it's just all thrust targets. And then this is the reason why I wasn't playing three of this. This against Unchained, Unchained just folds to evenly. Mm -hmm. It just completely folds to evenly. When you're playing into your board, the first thing, like the first play that you do, they'll normally trigger um, the big guy that Book of Moons uh, to set a card, and then that just makes this five, and then that gets this, and this just wipes their whole board. Uh, this came in a lot. Uh, I used it against Cash, I used it against Pearly, I used it against Dark World. <clears throat> just being able to force them to send a card if they end on just one big body and then just being able to push for a game with Gamma Burst <laughs> was too good. Yeah, it's, nice. it's, like a, it's like a little spot removal. Yeah, and then uh, if you're going first, uh, this for this, if they drill you, a lot of, uh, for a lot of decks it's the turn skip. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much it. Um, the deck performed a lot better than I think a lot of people gave it, uh, gave it credit for. Not a lot of people respect Ibley which caught a lot of people off guard. Uh, there was a lot of people that were just completely dumbfounded on the uh, the brave synchro play that you could do with it. I got drolled almost every round after round two, and then it didn't even matter. Yeah, that's the format right now. Yeah, but my only losses was to Gold Pride uh, and going into time because of Pep, and he just OTK'd me. I didn't see level two. And then I lost to Man of DM because he... Uh, he nibbed me when I was trying to Zeus' board. But other than that, everything performed very, very well. Uh, shout out to Millennium Games for hosting such a very, very, very well uh, okay. event. Our judging staff, the head judge, all the judges did everything really, really good. Um, shout out to my testing squad, TCG's finest. Uh, yes, sir. Figs literally told me to put in Ibley. I was playing Click and Echo, but he told me, he convinced me to play Ibley last second. I was hesitant, but I'm so glad I did. Car did the absolute most. Shout out to my buddy Jeff, who helped me with my list personally before we did the final touches to get everything down as far as consistency. And then shout out to my entire Rochester uh, friend group that helped me play test and get everything ready. Um, cause this was the first of our regional event that I played with Sprite, even though I've been playing it since the deck came out. Burton, and glad you got the shine. Thank you, sir. Alrighty, on to the next one. Yes, sir. Thank you.